Unfortunately, a lot of us who were raised with middle class backgrounds want to come in and teach in our first year. We want to relate. We want to reason with the kids. That was my background. As a first year teacher, I figured when the kids misbehaved, I'd call them up to my desk. We'd talk about it. I'd tell them why the behavior was wrong and they would understand. It's unfortunate, however, that a lot of our students mistake kindness for weakness. And there really is a need to let them know what the limits are and there needs to be some sort of consequence for their actions. So I would implore you, if you're a beginning teacher, uh, to please have consequences. You won't be viewed as mean. You won't be that mean, nasty teacher. You'll be an effective teacher who allows those students to come into your classroom and learn. Write down the word consequences underneath your rules and let's number one through three. I think there ought to be at least three or more consequences that you have that go from very mild consequences to quite restrictive. Usually the first one is a warning, so perhaps for the first step you want to give the student a warning. Let them know that their behavior is indeed out of bounds. And then you'll need to think of what you have at your disposal in your classroom, in your school, that you can use as a consequence. Elementary teachers, you've got recess. We can have a warning. We don't want to take away all of recess, because then what's the kid got to live for? He's already lost the best thing in the day. Why should, he mis why should he behave? Maybe take away one minute of recess, then five, then ten, or maybe some special act. High school teachers, you've got a number of things at your disposal. The hallway passing, the time between periods, the five minutes. The students want to go out in the hallway and talk with their friends. They want to see their boyfriend. They want to see their girlfriend. Use that to your advantage. After a warning, if the student continues to misbehave, we can take away 30 seconds of hallway passing. A minute, two minutes. We wouldn't want to take away much more than that because they're going to have to rush to their next class. Beyond that, you might want to have 10 minutes with you after school, 20 minutes after school. Continue to misbehave, write them off for, for an office detention. There are a number of unique consequences that I've seen in my um, tours around various schools. The first one I'd like to share with you is of a high school physical education teacher who during the phys ed activities I had the same system as a soccer referee. A student misbehaved, talked out, wasn't listening while he was explaining, fouled someone severely in a game, he'd pull out a yellow card. That meant it was the student's warning. It happened again, something else happened, a red card. That meant the student sat out for 10 minutes from that activity. After 10 minutes, could go back in, but another red card, that student was sitting out for the rest of the period or maybe even into the next period. One technique that I borrowed from another teacher I now use in my homeroom. I've always found it difficult to control the level of conversation during the announcements in the morning or uh, when we have advisement period and there are five or ten minutes left after our activity. I may say you may talk quietly or you may study. I need some way of controlling that volume within the classroom. The way I do it is by the three-finger approach. When the student is talking too loud, I'll say, Carlos, hold up the one finger. If it happens again later on, Carlos, he knows that if he gets the third finger, that means that I will be writing him up for having been too loud in that, uh, during our homeroom, or that he will stay with me 10 minutes after school, whatever it might be. And the student has gotten used to this now. I found it to be very effective. All right, gang, let's get started. You realize that we do have a quiz on botany today, and so for the next 10 minutes, you may study for that quiz. Pull out your notes, please study quietly. Let's go. Nicola, quietly, please. Kind of early, aren't you? Uh, Nicola, I'll handle this, thank you. Emicon, can you ask, please? I am a special ed teacher, I have a smaller classroom, I'm able to use a point system, but I've also seen this used in the regular ed classroom. And let me show you how that works. My students know that when they walk into my classroom, they walk in with 90 points. And I'm going to use this point system to figure out the behavior grade. It's not going to be me, whether I'm in a bad mood that day when I'm assigning grades, that ah, should I give him a B or should I give him a C for behavior grade? He's been a nice kid, except for the last week he's been a, a real pain. 
Uh, if I give them an F, I'll have to talk with the parents. Let's give them a D. No, it's very precise. My students know that I am going to figure out their behavior grade by the points they earn each day. When they walk into my classroom, they start out with 90 points. If they have a good day, I don't even have to give them a warning about their behavior, they're going to get 100 points. That is going to be averaged in with all their daily behavior grades to figure out their semester or their quarter behavior grade. Any difficulties? I'll put down their initials. After the warning, they know they're at 90. If I have to continue on, Ted, you need to be quiet. He knows he's down to 80 points now. Something more severe, I may not go in 10 point intervals. I may bounce very far down if it was something very severe or something very rude. Some kids will say, hey, I don't care. Take away all my points. They don't care much about the behavior grade. I'll say, hey, fine, that's what you want. I put them down to zero, but then, if they continue, it'll be 10 minutes with me after school. If they continue to misbehave, 20 minutes with me after school. Finally, I'll assign an office detention. All right, ladies, gentlemen, constitutional scholars, open up your books to page 309, please. 309. We're studying today about the Bill of Rights, which was tacked on a few years after, after the Constitution was enacted. Still a little review of the Constitution. How, excuse me, Twan, would you open up your book, please? Now, let's remember, the Constitution was enacted for what reason? Why do we need a Constitution? Why do you remember? Um, to give us down, to give the Constitution, the Constitution gave down to the federal government and other states. Yes, the states had too much control. How many pages in the Constitution? Who remembers? Yes. What? Four pages. With lamps would be made out of paper or four pages? Animal skin. What do we call the animal skin? Parchment. Okay, so some lamb had to give its life for our Constitution. Some lamb had to give its skin so that we could have a federal government. But does anybody appreciate this patriotic lamb? Nah. I may not have much of a sense of humor. But I would appreciate it if you tell me a little bit nicer than you. Take all, right. all the points. I really don't care. You can erase them all. Your Go choice. for it. Your choice. Get happy with the eraser. Well, remember, Jay, <laughs> now we're done with the points, but we see each other after school, and both of us have better ways to spend our time really after school. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'll give you back our positive track. Jenny, do you remember how we project the Constitution? Uh, in an airtight case, exactly. hydrogen gas with yellow light. Perfect. All right, gang, great class. Let's uh, fold it up for today. We remember those questions on page 311, though, for homework for tomorrow. Class is missed. Jenny, can I speak in the first second, please? Jenny, I appreciate the way you turn things around at the end of class. We'll see you tomorrow. One thing that another teacher has found to be very effective is to say, Calvin, you need to be quiet. Turn on a tape recorder and say, I'm asking you to please be quiet. If they do continue to misbehave, you've got it on tape, and you can show the parents how their child's been acting within your class. Another novel approach I've seen is a teacher who took a referral form, the one where you uh, refer them to the office for disciplinary action, has expanded it to poster size. And she will go through this poster in managing behavior. If the student was to misbehave, she would write down the student's initials in the first section. If they continue to misbehave, write his initials in this section. Continue to misbehave, write the initials in this section. Finally, if she fills in the final section, this student will finally have a report filled out on him or her. You may decide to have three spots where you fill it in, two spots, four spots, whatever works for you. You'll work your way through this referral form. When you finally reach the last spot, that student will indeed be referred to the office.